Hello there lovely people. This video is number 61 and it is on harder changing the subject of the formula. Uh, the keywords here I've got for you are subject and formula. So when you make something the subject you're putting one letter that's given to you or expressed to you in the question um, explicitly you're making that thing on its own and the rest of the stuff is all on the other side. All right. The formula is something that you can substitute into when you get given a number and you will get some answers to things. Okay. Now the method is, the aim is to make the letter stated in the question the subject. Just mention what that actually means. We're going to use the same method as we use to solve equations, but just harder ones, more complicated ones, more steps. And we'll most likely need to factorise in this um, just before the end or at the very end. Okay. Now in question one, we've got the first question, which is relatively simple in the scheme of it. Um, but one of those that looks a bit like, what do I actually do? What's the things I'm allowed to do here? Right, S equals M over AP. That means M, whatever M is, has been divided by whatever the result of A multiplied by P is, right? Now to get rid of a divided by AP, or A multiplied by P, we're going to multiply by AP, right? And we have to do that on that side of the equation as well, or formula as well. All right, so I'm not going to do the working out for every step, but there you go, that's the first thing. And that would give us SAP. And then that equals m, all right? Because that's all that's left after you've multiplied by an ap. What we then do is we divide by the two letters that we can divide by to leave p on its own. So p would equal m over, and we divide by an s and a, s a. So p equals m over s a. Okay, relatively simple. Just multiplying and then dividing. Getting rid of that gets us on to the next question slightly more complicated. Now this one, we've got some brackets in, and whenever you see brackets, your intuition probably should be to multiply out those brackets, expand them. And that's what we're going to do in this as well. So that's going to give us 6p uh, minus 2t, and that equals 8p plus 8e. Two sides to the formula that we've got here, treat it like an equation. Now, as we would normally with an equation, we'd have to get rid of the uh, unknowns on both sides. So let's take away 6p from both sides. That leaves us with minus 2t is equal to 2p, because I took away 6p's from that 8p's, plus 8e. All right. I'm not showing you my workings out as I'm doing it, but you could be showing that as you're doing it, that minus 6p minus 6p. Then I need to get p on its own, so I need to take away this 8e, so that's what I'm going to do. Minus 2t minus 8e equals 2p, right? And then to get p completely on its own, without that 2 in front of it, we're just going to divide by 2. So minus 2t minus 8e, all divided by 2, is equal to p. Now we can tidy this up even further, right, which would be a nice thing. I think this would be acceptable for your answer. OK, but because um, we have rearranged it, uh, we just want to fully, fully go with it. So we're going to half everything because this is an even number. And this is an even number and we can half both of those terms. So that would give us minus T minus 4E equals P because we've got rid of the divided by 2 bit. And then for my final, final answer, I'm just going to write it nice and neatly with the negative out of the brackets and then put a bracket in put a t, put a plus, and a 4, and an e. All right, that's just another way of writing this. All right, I hope all of that makes sense. Lots of steps in that one, all right, and that's how complicated these can be. This is this is probably more than grade 6 level of understanding, uh, but actually piecing all together the things that we do know how to do actually is not, I mean, all of it's foundation maths. All of this is on foundation maths, isn't it? Nothing too too scary it just is a bit mad there's loads of it going on anyway s equals uh, p plus 4 over p minus 3 now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to multiply by p minus 3 get rid of it from the bottom just like we did in the first question so i will have s but we have to pop that in some brackets because there are two terms there which make an expression so to make it one term we're just going to put it in some brackets that now allows us to multiply by s this p minus 3 and that's just going to equal p plus 4, which is on the top of the fraction, right? Again, two sides to the formula. Let's multiply out this bracket, sp minus 
s equals p plus 4. All right, problem we got here, p is on both sides again, right? Well, we can't take away um, the p, right, it's from an sp. Well, we can, but we can't actually numerically do it. All we can do is write sp minus p, all right? But we've still got that minus 3s over there. So I'm going to move that minus 3s. I'm going to put it on the other side, make it positive. So I'm going to put um, 4, which is still on this side, plus the 3s. I've just moved this negative 3s over to the other side, and I've moved that uh, positive p over to the other side. Become negative over there. That became positive over there. And I'm trying to make the s's not look like 5s. All right. Now, I'm going to factorize here. This is where some factorizing comes in, because I can take a factor of p out of both of these terms. So what I'm going to do, and that's going to isolate the p, all right? So p is then s minus 1 in the brackets, because that would multiply out to make that expression. And that equals uh, 4 plus 3s. Nothing's changed on that side, all right? Now I'm going to divide by s minus 1, all right? Because that leaves p completely then on its own, all right? And then that's going to be our final answer. So I'm actually going to not write that there. I'm going to write it here for our final answer of p equals 4 plus 3s over s minus 1. Okay, not the only way you could write that one. We could write it as 3s plus 4 over minus 1 plus s if you wanted. I mean, it'd be exactly the same thing, just switching the terms around. But there you go. There's that one done. Definitely, definitely getting more complicated now. All right. Now, moving up to question two, just slightly more annoyance slightly more complication to the question but nothing uh, specifically more difficult really um, got a cube going on in there and then we've got a fraction on both sides all right in the second one so we'll do the first one which would make sense first uh, that's a q not a nine so that's the letter q um, equals four and then x plus two m all cubed think of the opposite order of operations right you'd need to undo everything that's been done to m m's in the bracket here we need that on its own so the first thing we need to do is get rid of this multiplied by 4. All right, get rid of that, and that's going to be q over 4, okay, equals, and then we've got this x plus 2m all cubed in brackets. So x plus 2m all in brackets and then all cubed, right? Now to get rid of the cubed business going on here next to this effectively term, right, we're going to cube root both sides. So cube root of looks like that all right with a little three there like the square root symbol but with a three that means the cube root of q over four and then that would equal x plus two m all right now we need to get rid of the x term there all right and that's a positive x term next to this positive two m term so i'm just going to take away the x term that leaves me with the cube root of q over four minus x and that equals the 2m on this side we're nearly there all we need to do is get rid of the 2 and that means uh, multiply if it's stuck next to it so we're going to divide by 2 okay now that's going to leave us with m on its own which would equal the cube root of q over 4 minus x all over 2 okay now that looks a lot more complicated but all I've done is undo things, all right? I've only undone it. I'm going to get rid of the working out for that one, all right? So I can have some space to do the next one. And here we go. Now, this is where we're allowed to do some cross multiplication, all right? These are fractions, fraction on both sides. Um, and what we're allowed to do is multiply by B on this side and this side, and then simultaneously multiply by G on this side and this side. So what actually happens is you get something that looks like this b multiplied by 3m plus a equals g multiplied by m plus 2. Okay, now we're going to sort this out, multiply out your brackets. So b multiplied by 3m is 3bm. b multiplied by a is positive ab. g multiplied by m is gm and g multiplied by 2 is plus 2g multiplied out my brackets and just like the one down in the first question I need to get all the m's on the same side because I want to make m the subject of the formula again so 3bm minus the gm 
make sure that GM's on or the M terms on this side. And then I'm going to get rid of this plus AB by taking it away on the other side. So 2G minus AB. Okay, we're just rearranging everything, aren't we? Hence the title rearranging or changing the subject of the formula. Um, now, I need to factorize here to get M on its own again. So M is then opening a bracket because we only want that one thing on its own there on the outside, even if we could factorize to take anything else out. So that would be 3B, all right, minus G, close that bracket, equals 2G minus AB. Then all that remains is to divide by this term that we've got in this bracket here. So M equals 2G minus AB, all divided by 3B minus G. Okay, complicated, yes, very complicated looking, but take it one step at a time. Rewind the video if you need to. Have a practice when I link in the, the thing, and I reckon a few hours, or maybe not even a few hours, maybe just an hour or so's practice on this, um, if you understand what I've done in the video, should see you through with any sort of question uh, if you've got to change the subject to the formula at this particular level. All right, let's move myself over to the other side of the screen, and you can see in question three, I've got some words here. The cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. That is a rule that we would use to find a missing side length in a non-right angled triangle in the world of trigonometry. And I haven't made any of those videos yet, but I will do, and that will be slightly more um, in-depth explanation on that. But uh, for the moment, we'll just take that for as what it is. All we need to do is rearrange to make a the subject, which is this big capital A in the bracket here. All right. Now, it's slightly complicated to do that. So just listening carefully, but it's a very useful thing to know how to do because if you do rearrange it, or you or you just remember what the formula is, but if you do rearrange it, what you do get is how to work out a missing angle in a non-right angle triangle in the world of trigonometry. Okay, so I am going to start off by writing the rule as it is. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared plus 2bc cos of a. Now, it used to be that you get given this in the papers, but you do not any longer for a couple of years now you, the students have had to re remember this it's not too bad a lot of people do remember it actually um, I was a bit worried about that when it first came in but most people are remembering these rules at higher level GCSE maths because you tend to have good memories don't you you guys so what we're going to do is we're going to look at what we're allowed to do first now all of this here 2bc cos of a it's all multiplied together 2 is multiplied by b is multiplied by c is multiplied by cos of a all right cos of a is one one thing at the moment right because I'll talk about that in a sec. Now we're going to move that over to the other side and make it positive because it's all negative over here. So that's going to be a squared plus 2bc cos of a is equal to b squared plus c squared. Okay, now I can get rid of this, my, this uh, a squared by minusing it from both sides, leaving me with 2bc cos of a and a equals b squared plus c squared minus the a squared. All right. Now, I'm going to divide by this bit here. I'm just going to highlight this bit here. That, that bit, I'm going to get rid of that, all right? Because I want cos A on its own. Now, cos of A, and if you understand trigonometry, you'll understand what I'm doing. But, like I said, I'll explain more when I, when I actually teach you trigonometry. you got this, all right? And all of that is over 2BC, okay? Because we're dividing by the 2BC. All of that is multiplied together, so we're going to divide by it. On the other side now the only way that we can get rid of the cos in front of the a i.e what that's what the angle is going to be angle is equal to all of this the only way we can do that because we're not allowed to divide we're not it doesn't make mathematical sense to do that so trig ratio right very complicated very in-depth stuff trigonometry right and we don't have to delve too deep into it in the world of gcse but what we do have to know is that the only way we can get rid of a cos here is if we inverse it right now that means pressing shift and cos on the calculator and what it comes up with is cos to the minus one, like that, all right? Then all you've got to do is think about that as one thing, right? And then put that, and what the calculator does automatically for you is opens up a bracket. Just put all of that in the bracket, and the B and the C and the A will be numbers, all right? And you'll be able to calculate things. And there's our answer. We have made A now the subject. It was just knowing that you got when you've got cos next to an, uh, an angle in that little bracket there, the only way to get rid of it is to inverse it. All right, and that puts it on the other side of the formula. So that's it, all right? That is it for this. There's nothing 
in here that I don't think I've covered. I don't think you're going to get any questions that are harder than any of these, right? I'll put, I'll try to put in as many different examples as I can. You might get some that don't look like these ones, but just think about undoing everything you need to do that's been done already to the letter, right? That actually is just representing a number, all right? And you can always check to see if they work. You can get calculator and, and see if, um, make up some values for M and S and A, right? And see if it does give you uh, P if you put it back into the original equation, uh, original formula, all right? And if it does, then you know you've rearranged it uh, correctly. All right, so please uh, continue to uh, watch the videos. If you like the video, just give it a little thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel. There's a few more subscribers now, uh, building every day. So thank you to all you bear cubs out there. Um, please do uh, practice by clicking the links in the descriptions and continue to be lovely to one another. Look after each other. All right, you take care. All right, have uh, a good day. Bye-bye.